Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing a full face of Chanel. Some of the products are releases from this year and there are some old favourites as well. I've already got my skincare on for the morning and the last step is sunscreen. And when I reviewed the foundation that I am going to use today, it's the Le Beiges, it's the Water Fresh Complexion Touch. I use this in two shades. I have B40 and B30 and I mix them together. And when I reviewed this, I had to fuss around with it a bit because I have really oily skin and this is a really dewy foundation, which I think would be absolutely beautiful for normal to dry skin. And I did get it to work for me. And when I reviewed it, it was the middle of winter. So there was no humidity and cooler temperatures. But now it is spring here in New Zealand. So the temperature is getting up a a little bit more. Now I wore this the other day and I used the primer that I found worked well with this and that's the Milk Hydro Grip one and I'm going to put that on today. But I did an extra step just to see whether it would work and how it would wear throughout the day. So what I'm going to do is first spray some finishing spray on first and I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury one. This is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. So this is a step that I normally leave for the middle of summer when there's two or three weeks where it's really humid here just to get my makeup to stay put. But I thought I would try it out and it actually worked really well. So I'm going to spray this on my face first. And just to speed up the drying process, I do have my Dyson Air Wrap with the no attachment on it and it's on the lower setting and it's also on cool. So I'm just gonna turn that on just to dry the setting spray. And I'm just going to use one pump of the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. There are a couple of other primers that are probably more of my favorite ones, but this is the one that tends to work with this foundation. So I'm just going to put this on and then just let it sit for about a minute. Then I'm going to mix the B40 and the B30. There is a really large shade difference between the two. So I put one pump of the B40 on and then I put a pump and just a half of the B30 and I just mix them together on the back of my hand. And then I'm just going to stop that on my left side of my face first. So I have been just dotting this on to begin with and then I take a brush, either something like the Sonya G Fusion brush, the Jumbo Base one, or I'm going to use this one. This is the BK Beauty. This is the 101. Now this is a really beautiful foundation and I do like the way that it looks. It's just that I really want it to last and I want to be able to use it through the warmer months as well. And when I tried this the other day, I didn't have to repowder throughout the day. And I found that it didn't wear as quick either. By putting the setting spray on first and then going in with the primer, it just made it hold that a little bit longer. And I think I would have worn it for at least about 12 hours. And I had to go out and do some other things. And I was just really impressed with how it wore. So it does give a really beautiful finish and I am going to powder it down using the Chanel Loose Powder. But first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit more concealer under the eyes. I did put some of that foundation under my eyes, but it's just not quite enough for the coverage I need. So this is the Chanel Longwear one. This is in the shade 30. And I just put a little bit in each corner and then blend it out from there. I'm actually getting through this concealer and probably another few months I'll need to get it back up. And then for my eyebrows, I'm gonna use the one that I use every single day. I do have a couple of others. I have that Anastasia Beverly Hills one and I also have a Huda Beauty one, but I really haven't used those in a really long time. This is the one that I tend to reach for every single day. This one is nearly finished. I'll probably get one more use out of it for this video, but I do have a backup. And this is in the shade Bron Clear. So that's how much I have left, the tiniest amount, and it is turned up all the way. But I should be able to do my eyebrows for this video, and then I'll open up the backup that I have. So I'm really not too fussy with my eyebrows. 
I just want any gaps to be filled in and then I'll put some gel over the top that is the benefit one that I use every day as well just to hold them in place but really I just want them so they look tidy so this is the benefit 24 hour brow setter I use this every day as well I like it it tends to hold my brows in place and it doesn't feel crunchy it's just a really good setter and I also have a backup of this in my drawer as well. So to set the concealer under my eyes I'm going to use the Westman Atelier one. This is the Vital Press Skin Care Powder. This is in the shade Creme. And for eyeshadow primer I'm using the MAC Paint Pot. This is also one that I use every single day. And... It'll take ages to finish it, but I've had this for quite a while now, so I'm thinking maybe I should just get a new one just so it's nice and fresh. And then normally I do set my eyeshadow primer down, and this is the one I've been using for the last few months. And this is the Makeup by Mario one. This is the Master Eye Prep and Set. This is in medium, and I use this shadow down here, this is just a Wayne Goss brush. I use this one because it's nice and fluffy. And I just put the tiniest amount on and just to set that primer down. Then I'm going to take the Chanel, it's the Natural Finish Loose Powder. This is in 30. I also have the translucent one as well. And I try and just use each one to get through them. I don't mind either one. Probably the shade 30 is the one that I reach for the most, but I really like the translucent one as well. So I'm just going to use the Lamia powder brush, and I just tipped a little bit of powder in the cap. So I'm just going to sweep all that in and just set down this foundation. I really like this Chanel loose powder. It is a little bit more mattifying than some of the others I have, but I think it's great with my oily skin and especially with this type of foundation that has more of a glow to it. So this is going to mat the foundation down, but within half an hour or an hour, some of my natural oils will start to come through. So I'll get that glow back to my skin again. Not as much as when I initially put the foundation down, but I will get a glow back and it does look really, really lovely. For bronzer, I'm going to use two different shades and this is in the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I initially bought the one, this is the lighter shade and I've also got the deeper shade as well. Now this year they did release one in the medium between the two, which I really do need to pick up. But for today, I'm going to put them both on. I'm going to start off with the lightest one. So I'm going to take the Sonia G, this is the Jumbo Base Brush. Now this is a very light shade for me, but it does give a beautiful warmth to the skin. It is quite subtle, so I really just swirl the brush in there and just tap it on and even though it's light it gives a subtle warmth I think it's really lovely but the other day I used both of these bronzing creams and I quite like the look of them both together then I'm just going to swap to a smaller brush this is a Sonia G brush as well this is the classic base it's one of her fusion brushes and that fusion set is Fabulous. I use the brushes, not all of them, but I use most of the brushes every single day. They are just fabulous for liquid and cream products. So again, this is the deepest one. This is shade 395. It's called Solate Tan Deep Bronze. So I'm just going to go a little bit easier with this shade. But I do like both of the bronzes together. I think they look really lovely. And just using the smaller brush just gives me a little bit more control with this product since it is the deep shade. And while I do love the new releases of Chanel and I just love Chanel makeup, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I do love to reach for my favourite products from Chanel as well. And it's really good to just get them out and use them again. So I try to, when I put on makeup every day, just to rotate my products and try and get through my favourite makeup that I have. For eyeshadow today, I'm going to use one of the beautiful tweeds and I'm going to use 
Bron at Rose. This is definitely one of my favourites and I have been wearing this a lot. I just think this is really beautiful. So I'm going to take Sonia G. This is the classic crease brush. And I only just recently bought this brush and I've been using this nearly every day as well. And I'm just going to go into the lightest shade here. And I'm going to put that all over my lid and take it above my crease as well. It is quite a light shade, so I will take it up quite a long way above my crease. Then I'm going to stay with the same brush and I'm going to go into this shade here and concentrate this more in the crease just to start giving a little bit of depth. I think that this is an easy Chanel quad to use. I'm going to use all the shades today, but you could just use a couple and still get a really beautiful look. It really depends what sort of look you're after and whether you want extra depth or you want to use the shade that's a bit more sparkly or not. Then I'm going to stay with that same shade, this one here. I'm just going to take the Rafa 3 and I'm going to run this under my lower lash line. I will add the darkest shade as well, but I just want to start off with this sort of medium shade. I'm going to take the Sony G, this is the mini booster, and now I'm going to go into the darkest shade here, this beautiful chocolate brown, and I'm going to concentrate it on the outer third. And I'm also just going to take it just slightly up into the crease as well. And then I'm just going to get a little bit more depth out of the shade. So I'm going to take the Sony G, this is the pencil one, and just go back into that shade and just add in the very outer part. Just deposit more of that shadow and just get a little bit more depth just on the very outer corner. And I'm also going to run that just using the same brush under my lower lash line as well. So now just on the rest of my eyelid, I am going to go into the shade here. This is more of a sparkling shimmer shade. It's not as glittery as the shade that came in the other one that has the gold and the beautiful browns as well. That's the one Kivra. I think that has a little bit more fallout. But I had a subscriber reach out to me and DM me on Instagram and said when they used the shade, they had a lot of fallout over their cheeks. I don't tend to get that, even though it does have some sparkle in it. So I did suggest to her to use a brush similar to this one. It doesn't have to be this exact brand or anything like that. I'll show you two or three that I have. So the one that I'll use today, this is the Tukahodo one, and this is the F06. I tend to use this a lot. This is another really good one for placing down shades with a bit more sparkle in it. It's the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy one. This is the A505. And this is another good one as well. This is a Sonia G and this is the flat definer. And they're all, well, this one is quite long, I suppose, but they're a really good shape. They're a little bit more dense and they're a good shape for being able to just press the shadow on. And another thing you can do, and I suggested it to her and she said that this did work and she's no longer getting any fallout, is once you've got the shadow on your brush, just grab something like a setting spray you have. I'd probably use the Charlotte Tilbury, the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And then just, once the shade's on, and then just spray it. And then just slowly tap it over the lid. And you're much less likely to get fallout as well. But she did try that method and she said that that worked really well. So I'm not going to use any setting spray. I'm just going to do what I normally do. So I am going to use the Chukahodo one. This is the F06. So I just go into the shade. I sort of press the brush in and I don't tap the brush off or anything, but I just press it into the lid and just tap it through towards the center. And I usually always put just a little bit up through here. It just gives this really beautiful 
lightness to the eye lock. And then when I have a close look in, there is no fallout under here. I think if you went in quite harsh with the brush or swirled the brush round in any way, you probably would be more likely to get fallout, but I just haven't had any issues with it. Then I've just wiped down the Rafa 3 brush that I have, and I'm going to go back into this shade here. And I'm going to put just a little bit through here and also in the inner corner. And I've now used this eyeshadow quad a lot of times since I first got it. And the tweed embossing is still there. It didn't go as quickly as I thought it would. It's definitely a little bit more worn, but you can still see some of the tweed embossing. So it has lasted longer than I thought it would. So now I'm going to line my eyes. I'm going to use the Chanel one. This is the long lasting eyeliner and this is the shade Espresso. And then for mascara today, I'm going to use the new Chanel one. This is the Noir Allure, and it has the pop-up. It is really beautiful. Now, I've heard a few people not actually like this mascara. I've used this quite a few times now, and I actually really like it. It's maybe not as volumizing as the Chanel Le Volume, which is my absolute favorite mascara, but I think this gives a beautiful look. There's people that also say that it transfers or flakes. I haven't had an issue with that whatsoever. Now, the brush on this, I really like. It has these little spikes on it, and what that tends to do is grip the eyelash, so you get a little bit of lengthening and I do find that you can layer this mascara as well but what I tend to do with this mascara it does dry down a little bit quicker than the Chanel Le Volume so the layering that I want to do on the eyelash I do all at once I don't put a little bit on this lash and then move to that one and go back again I just keep layering it until I'm happy with what I've got and then I move on to the other eye. It's just that it dries down a little bit more than the Le Volume, but I really like this mascara. And as I was saying, I've been using it for at least two or three weeks now. I've had no issues with it and I think it gives a really lovely look to my lashes. So I'm not going to curl my lashes or put on any primer. I do have a Chanel primer that I use sometimes when I remember to use it. So I'm just going to solely use the mascara today. So what I find is with this one, I do get it right at the root of the lash and do give it that wiggle and then pull it up. And because of the little bristles on here, you can actually sort of feel it grabbing your lash. And as I was saying, I will keep going and layering it because I do love to layer my mascara. I don't have the longest of lashes. They're not that thick either. So I keep going with the same lash. And it does layer really, really beautifully. It's just like I was saying, it dries down that little bit quicker than the Chanel volume. So I just find I have to stick with the one lash. And this mascara also has red in it. You don't see any red at all. What the red is for is just to give it that extra depth just to make it extra black and that's what the red is for and for blush i'm going to use the chanel it's the labages this is the water fresh blush this is in the shade warm pink i initially bought three of these and then i ended up buying a fourth color as well i love these blushes i think they are beautiful they feel beautiful when they go on and they last really well too they give this beautiful sheer wash of color i just think they are gorgeous so i'm going to put one pump on the back of my hand and then just break up that pigment and then i've wiped down the sonia g this is the classic base brush and i'm going to apply it using this i also apply these blushes using my fingers as well 
and I've also used a beauty blender always I think work really really beautifully it just depends which you prefer but just a beautiful wash of color I think they are gorgeous they go well over the powder that I put over the top of my foundation it doesn't move any of the products underneath and these last fairly well during the day too they just give this really subtle just a gorgeous wash of color I think they are really really beautiful And I think today I'm going to add just a little bit of highlighter as well. So this is an old favorite of mine. This is the Poudre, this is the Lumiere, and this is an ivory gold. This is a really lovely highlighter. It's very subtle, but it's just a really beautiful shade. I think it's really gorgeous. So I'm going to pop a little bit of that on today I'm just going to take this as a Sonia G brush as well this was a limited edition set of hers and this has sold out and I love using this brush just for adding just a little bit of highlight so I'm only going to add a tiny amount just to give that really beautiful soft glow So for the lipstick, I'm going to use one of the new Chanel 4 lipsticks. I bought a few of these and I just think they are really beautiful. This is shade number 194, Sensibility, and it is a really lovely shade. It is the lightest out of all the releases, but I wear this a lot. Now I do think that this one was limited edition, but I do tend to reach for this shade quite a bit. So here is the finished look and the Le Beige's, the Water Fresh Complexion Touch is holding up really well. Now as I said when I was applying this or putting the powder over, a little bit of that glow has now come back. So even when I put the powder on and it made it quite a flat matte with my oily skin, this is what happens. Now when I wore this the other day, putting the setting spray on first and then the primer and then going in with the Complexion Touch, this is how it looked and this is how it stayed all day. So this combination tends to work for me. So if you have oily skin and you've got this product and you're thinking that maybe it wears off a little bit fast during the day, then that's definitely a technique worth trying out and see if it works for you. The Tweed Eyeshadow is gorgeous. It is definitely one of my favorites and I've been wearing it a lot. I think it's really soft and really pretty. And I do really like the look that this Chanel Noir Allure Mascara gives. I think it's a really lovely mascara. Now the people that did say that it transferred or flaked a bit during the day, they were trying it out during the summer. So when I first tried this, it was the end of winter, and now it's spring, it's just a little bit more warm and it's wearing really well. But I will keep using this and try it out during the hotter months because it's going to be summer here in New Zealand very soon. And I'll just see if there's any difference, but I'll definitely keep an eye on it. But at this stage, I think it is a really lovely mascara. I do like the fact that you can layer it. I do love to layer my mascaras, but as I was saying earlier, I just tend to do the one eye at the time and keep layering the amount I want, not swap between eyes because otherwise it just tends to dry down just that little bit faster than the Chanel Le Volume. But overall, I think it's a really lovely mascara. And the Chanel Water Blush, that is just gorgeous. I love it. I love them when I got them and I still really enjoy them. And this lipstick shade from the Chanel Fall is really, really beautiful. And and the shade that I'm wearing on my nails is also from the Chanel Fall collection and this is in the shade Spontane and it's really lovely. I've been using a lot of those nail polishes as well. Chanel have bought out some really beautiful products this year and I love going back to some old favorites as well. There's just something really beautiful about putting on a full face of Chanel. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, 
and I will see you next time. Bye.